was here on uh, December 17th to talk about cycling safety. And since December 17th, there's been 12 incidents and three deaths in the city of Houston. I've talked to all the people that survived. I've talked to all but maybe two of them. You know, and, and these, these are people becoming experienced cyclists that are getting hit. Not random people riding their bike around. These are people who understand the hazards and they're getting hit. And in none of their cases were the drivers issued a citation. <coughs> the cycling community in Houston is scared. Now, everyone, so hopefully everyone read the article in the Chronicle this past weekend. If there were 23 deaths of school children over the last five years in school zone, there'd be such a public outcry from the city for action. It, it, it wouldn't have been a story. It would have gotten nipped in the bud a long time ago. That's kind of where the cycling community is at right now. You know, so I want to, I have a meeting later. I appreciate your follow-up, Councilman Gazal. I have a meeting later this week with Jerry to talk with him about more specifics. But everyone needs to be, everyone's not really aware of this stuff that goes on. There was a cyclist who was hit on Washington about a week ago. Uh, he was knocked unconscious, sent to the hospital, woke up to find a ticket in his backpack for failure to maintain lane. He doesn't really remember what happened. I spoke to him. But what he thinks he did, he was going home on Washington. He lives right off of Yale. He was in the cycling lane. He thinks he was going in the left-hand lane to make his left-hand turn on Yale, and that's the last thing he remembers. He was hit and thrown into the car's windshield. There's no doubt that the driver hit him from behind. The physical evidence was clear on that. But he, the cyclist got the ticket. You know, that's, that's, to me, that just, that just boggles my mind. You know, we're kind of at a point now where I think immediate action, you know, so some sort of aggressive action is required. What they did in London, I don't know if you know about, they had a series of deaths in London. Well, they had the big dying in, and that made the big, you know, news across the, across the world, everywhere else. What they did that was really effective is they issued 14,000 tickets in a five-day period to drivers, cyclists, pedestrians, anybody that was not following the law like they should have. They got the message out. That was very, very effective. You know, are, are, is, is, is Houston to that point? I, I think so. I've had lots of friends that, that used to commute and ride to work. They don't do it anymore. I have one, two, I have four people that no longer commute. And these people that commuted for years in Houston, they just stopped. They said it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous in this city. You know, there's other things you can do to safe passage. There's other things you can do. But we need to make a, the city needs to make a, a statement that says, hey, enough is enough. People need to start abiding by the laws, paying attention on the roadways and give cyclists credit. But again, if there, if there were 23 school kids killed in the last five years, everybody in this room would be hearing about it. It'd be such an issue to everyone sitting in here. You know, and that's, that's what I want to make. It needs to be an issue. The cycling community is, is we're scared. You know, we're scared. You see more groups riding around Houston because we're safer in groups. If you're right, it's the people that ride by themselves that are vulnerable. If there's four or 20 people, we're happy. Thank you, sir. Your time has expired. We appreciate you coming down, and we all feel for you. The families of cyclists who have been struck and injured or killed, and we have been working to make use of the safer city. So obviously, we're investing a lot in the cycling infrastructure, from hike and bike trails to our bike ride share program. I have to say that uh, I, I don't drive very often anymore. Uh, but I almost hit a cyclist the other night, about 9 o'clock at night, uh, wearing dark clothes, no lights, uh, going down going down West Town and popped out in front of me. It, this is something where drivers have to be more aware, but the cycling community has to really work Certainly. to educate folks that, uh, that they have to obey traffic laws. And if you're going to ride at night, you need something very, very, very visible. Mayor Pro-Tim Gonzalez. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Appreciate those comments. Uh, comments. Uh, Mr. Morgan, thank you for coming down. Uh, I've been working on this issue uh, as well. I've talked to a uh, chief of police, uh, another assistant chief that's working on this issue, and, and we've talked about some, uh, some ideas uh, about uh, additional training for police officers and uh, also met with Mike Houston to also brainstorm uh, previously held uh, uh, stakeholders meeting to talk about how we bring education up about the safe passing awareness because a lot of folks may not know or uh, doing a better role out of that. I'd like to maybe also suggest that if we're seeing areas where we're seeing these uh, accidents occur, that maybe uh, we could get uh, some some department personnel, maybe public works, planning, and police to go out there and do a site visit and maybe proactively look at the area and see 
How can we learn from that incident? Was it a lighting? Was it uh, poor equipment? Uh, what else could be done so that we could make sure there's maybe a, a certain area that maybe going forward we could provide better striping, better lighting in the area? And, and, and also, I think that it falls on a lot of different people. If, if cyclists aren't wearing the proper equipment or lights at night, then they need to be sighted as well. They need to make sure that if they're running stop signs or whatever, that they, they're sighted just as much as the driver is. And just like we run radar, maybe we should do some enforcement on this so we could start educating all sides uh, with increased enforce enforcement during some of the busy uh, bike corridors, if you will. Uh, so I look forward to meeting with you on this and building on some of this uh, momentum that we're starting. Obviously, there's things that need to be done. We're going from being a very car-centric city to doing more stuff around uh, better design. And it takes a while. It's, it's a big paradigm shift. We're right. a big city with a lot of different lane miles. But I think, uh, I think we're moving in that direction, and obviously it can happen fast enough. And I know we've also cited that no citations have been issued, but, but I think uh, on one of those incidents, there was a citation that was issued after the- Yeah, right, 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 John Wayne's case, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, so, 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 first day passage ticket that's been is, issued to right. retroactively within December, I'm, I'm aware of that story. Yeah, I just want to say that, that okay. we're, we're trying to understand and get up to speed with everything. It, it, uh, we definitely have, uh, we're definitely looking at it, and I know I'm personally working a lot on this issue, and I look forward to meeting with you and, and the rest of the cycle com community and, and uh, seeing how we could learn from these incidents uh, to make sure they don't happen. Uh, you know, in many, in many uh, locations when there's a, some, some major incident that happens in, in a corporation, a lot of management or personnel go to that side to see what can we learn from this incident. That's, that's what I do in my job, I'm a process safety yeah, exactly. I, I do exactly just what you're saying. So I'm not sure if any of that, if, if that occurs, we're, we're maybe planning a public works is doing any of that, but uh, you know, sometimes uh, street design, lighting systems <coughs> could, could have an impact as well. And, uh, and so we need to continue, we're gonna have more cycling when you look at our Greenways Initiative and a lot of the work happening on Buffalo Body. Uh, so we need to start paying attention. Oh, well, so the, the, the site of the structure and usage is much better than it was five or ten years ago. So there's that part of the section where you got to go from the trail to your house, and you're going to have to cross the road at some point. That's where that's where the issue. Well, I've got a, a lot of my colleagues on the queue, so I don't want to pause the time. Okay. Thank you. We will. If we need to go into a zero tolerance enforcement period, I would just, I would urge you to. to be careful what you wish for. I understand. I understand. I, I, I stopped two cyclists last night when I was driving home that didn't have lights and told them they needed to have lights on. So it's, it's, it's education all the way around. I realize that. Councilman Kuba. Thank you, Dan, for coming down. Uh, I appreciate that. But when I pushed my bike out of my my, my apartment there on the, the bike trail, I'm on the Heights bike trail. So I, I ride there. Oh, you know my brother Randall. Yeah. When I, I, I went by the ghost bike on law after there was a, uh, an incident, motion to extend. And, and what, what I'm concerned about is perhaps we need in our uh, driver safety courses a section to be beefed up uh, at the legislation that deals with bike safety. I've had people holler at me while I was going from to my office on Lubbock Street and I crossed Washington Avenue get off the road. And so, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I don't belong on the, on the sidewalks and, and there's a bike lane there and, and most streets don't have bike lanes. That's why I like riding through the heights. But we have to educate people. We have to educate the person that, that's riding the bike. You'll know if you ever see me at night because I got lights inside my wheels. And I, I'm so lit up that, you know, I look like a Christmas tree riding down the street. <laughs> But what I'm telling you is if people can see me and they'll remember that. We need lights in the back like I have, lights in the front. They need to be well lit so people can see. I'm concerned about bike safety. I, I enjoy riding my bike, but I'm also realizing that the people on bikes like myself sometimes don't stop at a stop sign. You know, just uh, just just go right through if I, if I don't see anything coming. So there, there's education both ways that we need to do, and I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming down and uh, reminding us of what we need to, to address. But also, Mayor, we've got maintenance issues along the sidewalks and the lanes, the on-street lanes, that we push the, bike, the cyclists into lanes for automobiles, and I'm concerned about that. Um, once again, I, I was involved uh, while I was taking my hiatus on uh, a neighborhood cleanup 
and we were literally cleaning the sidewalks, and it was over, overgrown and pushing people into the streets. Whether they're walking or on bikes, it's pushing them into the lane of traffic. If there's a way that, um, I know we have a number of bike lanes up in the northern part of my district, um, yes. along the TC Jester area, the, the <coughs> I'm seated waterways a lot, I just start calling them, <laughs> but I know, you know what they are. Um, but I, I'd really like to make sure that uh, we're doing our part as well and not setting anyone up for failure. Thank you.